Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope everything is going well with you. The flower horn was sick. Stay tuned to see how I treat it, but stay until the end. The flower horn had a parasitic problem. It was attacked by a flagellate known to many of you, Styronucleus sp, better known as Exameta. The fish began by showing a small lesion on his face, which quickly grew to look like this. At first it looked like it uh, had hurt itself, but there's nothing in the aquarium that could do that. There are various uh, treatments for Spironucleus examita, and I've already demonstrated various forms of treatment here in the channel. I've treated different fish for Spironucleus examita in different ways, but this seems to me to be the most effective and the ultimate treatment. So don't skip the video, as I'm going to show you all the steps, like a cake recipe. As I usually do, I used the microscope and detected the parasite. After that, I contacted my friend Hector Gutierrez, who confirmed the diagnosis. These tiny microorganisms are Spironucleus sp. The optics used were 10 times and WF 16 times with three times zoom magnification on the iPhone. Do you remember this video in which I remove all the sand from Flower Horns Aquarium? If you didn't see it, here's the card above. Well, all the dirt that had accumulated in the sand wasn't helping the water quality and that was the main reason why I decided to remove the sand. Using this book, Enfermedad de los Peces, from my great uh, friend Hector Gutierrez, which is a must-have for those who have fish, I was able to see the exact dosages for each drug and the way they act, and that's how I did it. For metronidazole, one to one and a half uh, grams per 100 liters of water every day for five days with a 50% uh, water change on the sixth day. For ciprofloxacin, 0.67 grams per 100 liters of water, applying on the first, the third and the fifth day with a water change on the sixth day. When I spoke to Hector, he simply recommended the active ingredients to be used for the treatment, as his book explained everything you need to do. It really is a very complete book. In this way, I was able to have all the information on how to use these two medicines, from the dosage, the way to apply them and the treatment time. The downside is that you need a doctor's prescription to get these two drugs, uh, but it's something that, in my opinion, is worth the effort to try to get. Since the parasite can't survive outside the host at temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius, I raised the temperature of the aquarium to almost 33 uh, degrees Celsius. Of course, this procedure can't have its uh, drawbacks, as high temperature can cause uh, pathogenic uh, bacteria to multiply more quickly, but the focus here is eliminating spironucleus. After a few hours, the temperature had already reached the desired values, so I started the treatment. 
The measurements I'm about to present are for my aquarium, which is 200 liters. For yours, do the maths uh, on the size and volume of your aquarium. The dosage, as I've already mentioned it, uh, is 1 to 1.5 gram per 100 liters. In my case, I just have to multiply it uh, by 2, which in this case means 3 grams of metronidazole. The metronidazole I'm presenting here is pure metronidazole and you can't uh, find it easily. I borrowed uh, it from a friend, but you can't find it in a pharmacy under the trade name Flagil. Metronidazole is an antimicrobial medication that works against certain diseases caused by bacteria or protozoa. It works by entering the cell of the bacteria or protozoan, uh, modifying its cellular processes and damaging the DNA of the mi microorganism. By doing so, uh, the drug not only causes the death of bacteria, but also prevents others from being synthesized. Now, in the case of ciprofloxacin, I'm going to use a box of 500 mg. As I said, the dosage is 0.67 grams per 100 liters. In my case, I should multiply this again by 2, which uh, would give me 1.34 grams. But it's very difficult to break down tablets to this weight. So I made 2.5 tablets, giving me 1.5 gram instead of the 1.34 grams, but that's okay. Ciprofloxacin is an antibiotic which is considered broad spectrum because it can be used to combat different bacteria. It acts by inhibiting an enzyme that promotes the multiplication of bacteria. During the treatment, I always kept the lights off, as I don't know if the medicines are photosensitive. I also didn't feed the fish throughout the treatment. Now, the video of the whole procedure will run, so you can follow along. Don't worry, only the first application is at normal speed, the rest are in time lapse, but all well documented, so that, uh, if you wish, you can take notes.
As you can see, the fish has improved a lot after the first treatment. The wound is no longer so aggravated and seems to be healing. Now we we'll wait 14 days to do the second dosage. Look at that! 14 days later is practically healed but it's essential to do the second part of the treatment. Now, to start the second part of the treatment, I'm going to do everything the same as the first part, from raising the temperature to the same dosages as the first part. Let's start the second part of the treatment. In the meantime, if this video is helping you, uh, don't forget to help me too by subscribing, liking and commenting. Thank you!
the sixth day, it's time to do the water change and finish the treatment. I'm very happy with the result, as the fish is completely healed. There is a small scar, but that's normal when you have a wound. I'd like to say a big thank you to my friend Hector Gutierrez for his help. As you can see, he's left with his scar. But it's nothing compared to what could happen if I don't act quickly and correctly. Remember, we should never medicate without a correct diagnosis. Seek a specialized help because it can save lives. As you can see, he's in uh, great and very good health. If you liked the video and it helped you, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and comment. Thank you very much for your support and see you in the next video. This video is of a treatment for Spironucleus SP. Only use it if you're sure that's what's wrong with your fish. I disclaim any responsibility for the misuse of this treatment. You should use at your own risk.